friends, Logic Heap is again back with a very new series of Understanding Operating System. This is the very first lecture where we are going to study from the very basic uh, like what is operating system, why do we need operating system. Let's start. So firstly, I'll suggest two books for operating system. The very first is Modern Operating System by Tenenbaum. And the second is Operating System Concepts by Galvin. Both are really good books. Very first question that arises is what is operating system? You'll have to answer this question everywhere in your classroom, in your exam paper, in your interviews, everywhere. So what our thing is how we are going to uh, learn operating system is like first we'll see the keywords and then I'll try to explain those keywords clearly. So what is operating system? Just, re just remember three points. First, OS acts as an interface between user and hardware. Second, it is a resource allocator and third, it is a manager. So point, OS acts as an interface between user and hardware. If we see this diagram, then at the very core, we have computer hardware, which includes CPU, input-output devices, printer, memory. And for actually using this hardware, a very basic hardware understanding code needs to be written, which is a part of an operating system. So operating system is basically uh, containing some functions uh, which which makes this hardware usable right uh, like if you want to read something from memory or write something to the memory there are functions already written every bit comes the layer of system and application programs which you have already seen so like all the applications that you see whether it's paint microsoft word text editor compiler assembler database system all these are application programs and the user outside is now going to access the system so how it works is if you want to write a python program which prints a message so you'll open an application program let's say python uh, where you which is an ide so what you will do over there you will write print and a message so internally what is happening is this application program has print a message which is using a write function a write system call already written in operating system if operating system wouldn't have been there then this application program uh, will have to implement the complete code of print which can interact with the hardware. So necessarily we need operating system which is providing all the basic functionalities. So now this print is simply calling this uh, function which is an operating system the write function uh, which is helping in directly communicating with the hardware. So this way OS is acting as an interface. It is, it is a resource allocator. So as we know, computer has different resources like CPU, input-output devices, memory space, storage. So like when a process says, I want to use the CPU or I want to use the I.O., operating system, operating system is the one who is going to allocate that resource to that process. Now, suppose if multiple processes are requesting, then it's the operating system's job to decide which process is going to take it first, which one is going to use it next. All this work is done by the operating system. Point, we said it acts as a manager. So now, since it has got so many resources, every resource has, we need to do some management over there. Like for memory, uh, if we, if we uh, allocate some space in our memory, then if that process which has created that space 
if it is ending then it's the operating system's job to actually clean that space right so managing memory similarly managing different processes so like creating a process scheduling it suspending it resuming it all this is the work of operating system uh, or we can say that managing storage like creating files deleting files this all work of management also comes under operating systems functionalities so now we have clearly understood that what is operating system we should remember three points that we said next is like why why do we need operating system the very first thing is as you clearly understood from the video that ease of use by using operating system everything is becoming more easier and it's more user friendly of course second thing is its efficiency because operating system is managing all the resources it makes sure that no resource is remaining idle for long time let's see what are different types of operating system that we have seen to date the very first that came into the picture is batch operating system which we used long long back uh, at that time computer were like giant computer systems so we used to submit job one then it gets processed uh, then we get the result after that only you can give any other job for processing so one by one jobs come we get the result and then another job comes this was the process now the major drawback with this is that suppose if job one is taking too much time then all the jobs uh, which came after it are waiting so starvation this is called starvation that these are the small processes right the process that came after are the small processes and the very first process job one is taking too much time so job 2 and job 3 are not getting time uh, to get processed so waiting for long amount of time is called starvation second problem is that uh, first you need to understand a process if you submit a job or if you submit a process uh, if you are running a process then there are two things either that process wants cpu or that process wants input output right so while a process is doing input output cpu is remaining idle for that period right which can be used for another process or another job which is not happening in batch operating system so these were the major drawbacks with this next is multi programming and multitasking there is very very thin difference between these two so as we have already understood that process needs two things cpu and io right so when uh, suppose there are two processes now the first process came and it is using cpu after some time it feels that, uh, so there's a need of io so this process left cpu and goes to the io now the next process is waiting so we give cpu to next process so cpu doesn't remain idle next job is picked up and then this job is completed so like this process is done with the use of cpu now we take it out right this is called multi programming and we are using the approach of no preemption so like once the job once the process says it is done with the cpu only then we are taking it out right this is multi programming no preemption once the task uh, requiring cpu the thing which it requires from the cpu is done only then we take it out from there this is multi programming now for multitasking it is very much similar to multi programming but it is with preemption so if uh, you have given a chance to a process and now this is requiring more cpu time but you are giving another process to use the cpu and taking it out with the promise that you'll bring it later this is multitasking so multi programming with preemption is called multitasking we see multi processing so multi process first uh, there's one thing which i need to tell you 
there is a program and there is a process thing. What is a process? Active program is called process. So, which is in CPU currently, that program uh, is, uh, so we say that this program is currently going under process. Active program is called process. That's the thing. Theke? So, there are two things, multi-programming and multi-processing. So, if there are multiple processes running simultaneously, this is multi-processing. Right? In case of multi-programming, there is only one program which was active, which was getting processed. So, it is multi-programming and this is multi-processing. So, like uh, nowadays, uh, you see quad cores are coming or octa cores are coming. So, each core can take a job, a process. So, multiple processes are running simultaneously. It in it introduces parallelism and uh, why it is good it is firstly faster and secondly it is more reliable so like if one core fails others are working so in this way it is faster and more reliable so this is it with our very first lecture i hope you understood the very basic concepts related to operating system we'll soon start exploring all these things that we have seen in crisp yeah so thank you thank you very much